Next, I have the pleasure of introducing and talking with Dr. Kari Jackson Cotwright, who currently serves as the Director of Nutrition Security and Health Equity for the Food and Nutrition Service at the USDA. Let's get this conversation started. Please give a round of applause and help me welcome Dr. Kari Cotwright. All right. Ooh, my feet don't even touch the ground. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cartwright, it is an honor to have you join us um, at our America's Healthiest Schools Leader Summit and participate in this fireside chat um, so we can all learn more about you, your work, and how we can play a role in supporting with um, addressing nutrition security. If you will, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background? Yes, thank you and everyone. I just want to thank the Alliance for a Healthier Generation for having me here. Um, teachers are near and dear to my heart. My mother is a retired elementary school principal. My aunts are retired <laughs> elementary school principal. And I come from a long line of teachers. So in this role, I am on leave from the University of Georgia where I myself am a teacher. I'm a professor as well. So you're training them up to come um, to college. And so it's just so special and I just felt so grateful over there. I think about the privilege to move our bodies and I was just so grateful to hear about the wonderful things that you're doing. And so first and foremost, I am a mom of three. So you see this slide with the three little girls here. And my background is that I am a early childhood obesity prevention researcher at the University of Georgia. So it's near and dear to my heart. My little ones are five, eight, and nine right now. And they love to cook with me. So people always ask me, do you have pictures of them in the kitchen with you? And so we were, we were taking some pictures on that specific day. And so what I do with my research is I use the arts. I use fun things, music, dance, just like what you're doing. I have a play about nutrition um, to teach kids about nutrition, but meet them where they are. And so um, I always have to say that if you want to hear me sing the broccoli song, you can check, check out my TED Talk. And, um, or you can corner me in the corner and I'll sing it for you. But we're always using fun things like characters. So this picture right here is one of my former students in a carrot costume. And my daughter, when she was about four years old, and we were at a, the State Botanical Garden in, um, in Georgia, in, in Athens, Georgia, where UGA is located. But what I've been able to do is bring in my experience as a community-engaged researcher, as a researcher that is steeped in health equity, and work on so many things that, and, and take it up to a level that is uh, nationwide. And so here we have lots of programs like the SNAP-Ed um, UGA program, where we have Healthy Child Care Georgia, where I'm working with Head Start centers and parents and teachers and young children to teach them about healthy eating and teach them about my place, or so they're tasting fruits and vegetables. This picture here, you see um, my first part of federal service was really working at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I was a fellow um, in the division of nutrition, physical activity, and obesity. And at the time, I was able to work very closely to disseminate policy for Let's Move Child Care. And so as I'm doing that, learning about policy, I'm sure in your classrooms you learn that sometimes when we're up here making up the policies, we don't know how it's going to land on the ground. And so for me at the time, I didn't have any children. So we were saying, no screen time under two and all these things. And then I had these three little babies. I was like, how do you do that? So <laughs> just know that I feel you and I am really, really concerned concern when we make policies about how do these policies really land on the ground. And so for me, in terms of equity, um, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a native of Atlanta, Georgia. And you know that that is the birthplace of Martin Luther King Jr. And there's such a rich history. Um, the King Center is located there. And so I've just always been around equity. And my father was actually the head of um, community empowerment at the King Center. So I spent a lot of time at the King Center. This is a painting that hangs in my mother's house with my father and Coretta Scott King. Um, it was an actual picture. And then somebody painted it for me, uh, for my mother. And um, he's passed away now, but he taught me so much about community engagement and my mother about education. And even when I was little, I would go to schools and volunteer. And so as we think about that, I always talk about in one of my keynotes how I lived in a middle class neighborhood called Adamsville in Atlanta. And I would take the bus, and I know you guys are familiar with the school bus, to Buckhead, which is a very affluent neighborhood um, in Atlanta as well. And so what I do in this work is to really think about nutrition security and health equity, but to 
also think about how far too long zip codes have defined life expectancy. And I don't want that to be anymore. And so as we're thinking about that, my challenge to you is to get on the bus with me and use this as a vehicle for change for nutrition security. And I want to define nutrition security because it's a little different from food insecurity, which we we're working on at USDA, and we're not abandoning that at all. Nutrition security means that everyone has consistent and equitable access to healthy, safe, and affordable food that is optimal for their well-being. And that just warms my heart because it's not just giving food, it's thinking about overall well-being. And so it's just an, another level. Um, we started this initiative about a year and a half ago and it's very important, it's a core priority to Secretary Vilsack at USDA. And our programs reach one in four Americans. We have a suite of 16 nutrition assistance programs. I know you're familiar with our National School Breakfast Program and our National School Lunch Program, but we have SNAP and WIC and many other programs that I will talk about, but we really want want to make sure that everyone that is eligible is enrolled in our programs. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing um, your background. I got to talk to you a little bit last night and hear about your kids and the passion for the work and hearing more today, I'm even more inspired. So, so thank you so much for sharing. Um, so you've been in your new role for about six months, yes. I believe. Okay. And it looks like you've been quite busy. I follow you on social media <laughs> and back to back to back to back. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more um, about your role elevating the nutrition programs and um, perhaps what has been most exciting or inspiring for you um, in your time in the role? Sure. So one of my major roles is to elevate the momentum of the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition and Health. And many of you, some of you may have even been there. So we just <laughs> celebrated the one year anniversary. So we're building a lot of momentum. And I want to share with you what our goals are for the White House Conference and the national strategy. And it's guiding all of this momentum related to nutrition and physical activity and wellness. And they are to end hunger. When I looked at it the first day on the job, I was like, oh, okay, we're going to end hunger. That's great. <laughs> you know? So that's my mandate, to end hunger, to improve nutrition and physical activity, and to reduce diet-related diseases and disparities. And Tracy, you, you talked about the disparities that are present in terms of food insecurity, and so that's very important because we know that there are many structural inequities that keep people from living a healthy lifestyle, from having access to healthy food, from having access to physical activity, and you are the representative of making it possible in schools. And so as we are working, um, we have four pillars that we work on in terms of nutrition security. And so the first is to really think about having um, access, and that's the definition. So here we go, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my slide <laughs> that, that are up there. So having meaningful nutrition support, we spend over a billion dollars a year on nutrition education, and we wanna make sure that we have that throughout all demographics and all life stages. And two is healthy food. And so again, having that access to equity access to healthy, safe, and affordable food. Three is collaborative action, and that's the work that we're doing here, partnering with organizations like the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, partnering with schools, partnering with stakeholders all over the country to make sure that we're getting the word out about nutrition security and creating successful partnerships. And the fourth is with equitable systems, prioritizing equity every step of the way. And I say that I don't just have an equity lens, I want you to have LASIKs and have an equity vision. <laughs> and so as we think about that, that's a lot of the work. And I'm just, I'm just excited that we have this core initiative and I pinch myself in the morning at thinking there's a role for the Director of Nutrition Security and Health Equity at USDA. And so as we think about that, and, and, and this slide, um, again, you've already brought up the, the issues that we have around uh, food insecurity, and we know that there are millions of people, 30, over 30 million people in our country are food insecure, and we have to work on, I think we have all the tools we need to end hunger, but we have to have these creative partnerships, and we can really solve it together. Agree, agree. So, um, okay, understanding the burden of food insecurity across the country and how it impacts so many families, and we know that the pandemic only exacerbated mm -hmm. um, that crisis. From a federal program administration standpoint, um, in what ways would you say that USDA had to pivot um, as a result of the pandemic? And then maybe what are some of the current priorities that perhaps didn't you know, come to the top before, but you see um, 
happening now. Yes, several. So let me say thank you to all of you as educators because one of the programs that we had um, come out during the pandemic was uh, PEBT or pandemic EBT. And many of you worked tireless, tirelessly to help that be an effective program for USDA. So just, I wanna give you a round of applause because we know that wasn't easy. And um, you know, writing that policy and getting it out because we needed to fill that gap. We needed to make sure that parents and children and families had food at the table mm -hmm. and they, that they couldn't get because we know that many children are receiving the majority of their meals at school. And so that was the first thing. So what came out of that is now we have one of our, uh, for the first time in a long time, a brand new program called Summer EBT. And so we will need your help in making sure that parents are aware that we're going to have summer EBT. We will still have to have um, applications because that's how, what is mandated from Congress. But again, bridging that gap over the summer because we know that there are many children that don't have that access to food. And then so we also have it where the, we, they can also meet and have non-congregate meals. Mm -hmm. And so they can just pick up meals and take them back to their home. They don't have to be at a facility. And so those things are just really exciting. Um, I also bring up two other things. So when we think about community eligibility provision, and what I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, we talked about how um, it is a program that really helps us to have um, children who are in high need areas to have uh, access to free lunch and free breakfast. And so what is wonderful is that in recent times, that was just recently passed in our final rule, is that the threshold looking at the uh, level of participation we used to be 40 percent in terms of the school and now it's been lowered to 25 percent and that's going to help 3,000 more schools be under the community eligibility mm -hmm. provision and make it very easy for our children to have access to food because we know as you've already said they learn better mm -hmm. and we're bridging that gap and we're reducing stigma and that is so so important and we want one of our core priorities is universal school meals for all we've had eight states already um, adopt that and the community eligibility provision is going to make that easier and stronger and then I'll just lift up for one moment WIC which is our women infants and children supplemental nutrition assistance program and it really helps for our mothers who are having children ages 0 to 5 mm -hmm. lactating postpartum as well who are pregnant and they're able to get a WIC food package we are strengthening that food package right now making sure they have access to more fruits and vegetables canned fish and making sure that we are diversifying the WIC workforce so we can work with our participants and making sure that their cultural needs are addressed through the WIC food package. So very exciting things going on. Exciting. I started my uh, career with the um, WIC program as a um, clinical nutritionist. So. Well, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> maternal health and child health, very near and dear. So you talked a little bit about uh, summer EBT. For attendees that might be wondering, okay, summer EBT, the summer food service program, can you speak a little bit about how summer EBT will fit alongside um, existing programs? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we won't, won't get rid of any of our existing programs. And so with our summer food service program, of course we have it where there are specific sites where people can go and pick up food and we will still have that. And I love that non-congregate <coughs> meal provision. But with summer EBT, just like with PEBT, there, there will be families who actually get an EBT card. And so um, it, it is to start in the summer of 2024. Of course, states have to come up with their plans and roll that out. And so there are certain states, I know Minnesota has uh, is ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you that, any, <laughs> any Minnesotans here. Um, and so we are, um, really excited about that. And I know Chickasaw Nation is also going to be working on that. And so as we are doing that, there will be states that serve as models and we'll be rolling it out, but the rule is here. And so the difference is just like with Pete, PEBT, the families will receive cards that will give them access to extra dollars mm -hmm. to supplement their food dollars. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so if we can actually circle back, you had brought up the um, White House Conference on Hunger, um, Health, Hunger, and Nutrition. Yes. Um, so I know that you all um, had launched a summit, a national yes. summit, yes. and then started to do some subsequent uh, regional-based summits. Yes. And um, if I read correctly, it was focusing on the integration of health and nutrition. Yes. If you can speak a little bit about that integration and what you're hearing and seeing um, as a result of these summits. 
Yes, so as a part of what we're doing in terms of our national strategy, the second pillar for the national strategy is better integrating nutrition and health. And as we're working on that, one of the things we found in the healthcare sector was while there are certain healthcare um, professionals who know about our programs, they weren't quite certain how to get their patients enrolled. They may not have been asking the questions to screen for food insecurity. And so we're working in partnership to make sure that everyone is trained and they know about what we're doing and they do what we call a warm handoff to our programs. So one of the things that we have done, or I'll tell you several, is with our White House commitments, I give and I'll be here by next week because they're having their national conference here, um, they have committed to training over 67,000 pediatricians in terms of knowing about food insecurity and knowing how to screen for food insecurity. So that's wonderful. So we're doing a course to teach our pediatricians about nutrition security. Another thing um, that we are doing is to um, look at overall, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought, y'all. Um, but look at overall having our national health summits. And so what we did was we had a national health summit right after the White House conference, which was wonderful. We wanted to engage key stakeholders, government officials, the public, everyone about integrating nutrition and health. And what came out of that was we are also hosting with ProMedica and Root Cause Coalition seven regional summits. And so what are we doing? We're raising awareness about our 16 um, nutrition assistance programs. We're letting letting them know how we can partner. Uh, we have several produce prescription programs. You probably heard about mm -hmm. the food is medicine initiatives that right. are going on. And we're just making sure that people are aware of our programs and making sure that we are doing as much as we can to better integrate nutrition and health. So in your regions, we've already had four of our regional summits. We'll be coming around to all the regions. So if you have questions about that, please do reach out because we do have some remaining summits. And we just know that we can do better together. Awesome. All right, so um, if we can sort of end our conversation today and maybe spend a little bit um, of time on a, a topic that I know uh, you're passionate about and, and so am I. Uh, so in addition to you know, elevating the food, as um, food assistance program, I know USDA is instrumental in um, developing the dietary guidelines um, for Americans. And I've been um, listening to some of your speaking engagements as you're on a My Plate tour, yes. I hear. Yes. Um, so if, very exciting. And if you could share a little bit um, about this renewed focus on My Plate and uh, what USDA is doing uh, to, pro to pro 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 promote My Plate. Thank you for that question, Tracy. Everybody, I am so excited <laughs> about promoting my plate. I'm a registered dietitian as well. And so as you think about that, this is a registered dietitian's dream to really promote our federal. I see some people shaking their heads smiling. Thank you for that. I'm just excited about my plate. And so uh, for our, it is our federal symbol for healthy eating. But what we found is only 25% of Americans are aware of my plate. How many of you know about the food pyramid? Raise your hand. All right, that's always the case, right? And so everybody else has not heard necessarily of my plate, but it's a very simple tool to teach uh, families and children about healthy eating. And so as we look at this, we have a My Plate National Strategic Partnership. Many, many entities and collaborators are a part of that, from grocery retailers to uh, health professionals, many, many. And so what we want to do is make certain that we are partnering with large entities to make sure we get the word out about My Plate. What we did last week, I was in Denver, and we were at the FENCI Conference, which is our Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics National Conference, and we held our first My Plate um, town hall. So so what we're doing is going around communities across the country and hearing from people about their needs. What do you need us to do? What types of resources do we need? And our um, Center for Nutrition Promotion and Policy already has wonderful resources and tools, but we need people to know about them. So if you haven't done it or you haven't seen it yet, you can whip out your phone and follow My Plate on Instagram because we have lots of things. We are spying My Plate where we see My Plate. We have leadership and the public posting things about my plate, which is really, really exciting. And we are just so excited to get the word out. And so uh, if your schools need posters, if you need resources, if you need information, please let us know because we want to get the word out. We want for everyone in our country to be able to thrive and you are key to that. So what I want to say to you is that your voices matter. I want you to reach out to me. My email is simply my name. It is Kari 
www.cotwright at usda.gov. If you want to set up a meeting, if you want to ask me questions, please do because we are so appreciative of the work that you do. We want to partner with you and we're excited about our work on nutrition security and health equity and we are going to get this done. So hopefully I'll be able to come back and we'll be able to cheer ourselves on because we've ended hunger together. Thank you. So exciting. <laughs> Those were um, the questions that I had for you. Anything else that you want um, to share with the audience? Any last takeaways or calls to action? Um, I, I would think the calls to action would really be to think about how you can uh, promote our programs to your children and families mm -hmm. and to continue to partner up with us. We really are working to make our school meals healthier. Um, I know there are school nutrition professionals here. I value you as well. Um, we have several new grant programs out with our farm to school. Mm -hmm. We have some out that are uh, really looking at providing healthier meals and making sure that you have what you need. We are partnering with the Urban Alliance to make sure there's training available to have scratch meals and very delicious and tasty meals. My children especially love to gobble up their school meals and we're <laughs> very excited about that. And so keep just doing the excellent and outstanding work you're doing. Uh, again, you are near and dear to my heart because of my mother's work. And again, all my children are at the same school for the first time, y'all. So elementary school. <laughs> And so it really makes uh, a big difference. And I don't want you to hesitate uh, to reach out to us and let us know what your needs are. And I may be coming to a town near you. So if you need me to come out, I'm happy to do it. I really want to engage. Uh, that's a part of my roots and it's so, so important. So I'll just say uh, thank you again. I'm trying to think if I forget anything, Tracy, but um, if I will be hanging around a little bit. So please come and shake my hand. And just again, thank you so much, everybody. We're so grateful. Congratulations to you for all you're doing for our children. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.